Hello, family. Welcome to the show. Let me add Bob Sila and Yahya. Can hope you the hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, Yahya. I hope the sound is clear for everybody. How's the family? Welcome Good, thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Yeah. JC, how are you? Praise the Lord. Yes, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, uh, Bob Seal, I'm good. Hope you're well as well. Uh, so, yeah, family, finally, we're doing a live stream. I've been asked so many times when, I'm gonna, when are we, we're going to be doing a live stream. So, um, given the circumstances of the coronavirus, we've got plenty of time to do live shows. So, um, yeah, happy to do this live stream. And, um, yeah, so the topic for today's debate, we're going to be discussing, you know, who prays like, like Jesus. Is it Muslims? Is it, is it Christians? And I think it's an it's an important topic because I will say 99.9% .9 of the time when I speak to our Muslim friends, you know, they will go to go to Matthew 26, 39, for example, you know, to uh, to argue that this is the case. So, you know, I like to know. I like to know this, if this is the case. So I have invited, um, representing the Muslim side, I've, re I've invited Yahya, who's a, if, if, uh, if some of you guys don't know him, you know, he's a regular speaker's corner. He's originally from, from Lebanon, and he's a favorite defender of Islam and, and the Prophet Muhammad. Welcome to the show, Yahya. I think he's gone now. Is he... I think Maybe he's just he just gone. turned off his camera. Yeah, How welcome to the show, Yahya. Just uh, any words to, to, the, to our viewers? Okay, you can hear me now? Yeah, we yes. can hear you. Would you like to say any words to the uh, to our viewers, Yakia? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. No. Yes. Uh, peace be upon everybody. I I hope. Yeah, I hope uh, this is going well, and we are uh, having a problem connecting. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. How are you? Very good, very good. Uh, I will Thanks, try uh, to sit and talk. You okay. Cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um okay, so and on the on the other corner, <laughs> on the blue corner, I will have uh, we have for, for those of you who don't know who, who Bob is, yeah. he's um he's an evangelist, he's can a polemicist. Can wait, 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 yeah. Well yeah, I think he's having I think he's having quite a few yeah. technical problems. Yes, it is. I mean, Jack, if you can maybe stand next to the modem, that, that would probably help. If, it's, if, uh, if the modem is... Uh, I would maybe... It, it might be easier if Yaya turns his camera off. And then start again. I think he's got bandwidth problems. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Yaya, it might be yeah. easier to turn your camera off. No, that's that's fine. It's, it's, what about... Say, say, say something, Yaya. Let, let me pick okay. up your time. Okay, that's cool. I think the sound is... It's okay. I think it's yeah, because he, I, I guess. Yeah. I, I guess now it's fine. I, I guess now it's fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So introducing Bob. Whoever. Um. For those of you who don't know who Bob is, um, he's a Christian evangelist, uh, polemicist, um, philosopher, and all round working encyclopedia. So um, he goes by the name of Bob, Bob the Builder, or uh, as I like to call him, Bob Sila. Welcome to the show, uh, Bob. Thank you, JC. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, in DC in the morning. Good, good to be back Being on fun. Toko One. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I think that I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Marie, I, go get me I'm my stuff. A, yeah. I'm going to do a live, Maria, a live stream, uh, a uh, proper uh, live stream. Uh, yeah, yeah no, him. he just doesn't. Yeah, yeah, if, you can, if you're going to speak um, out of turn or off camera, you need to mute your mic, sir. Yeah, if you look at the bottom, there's, uh, there's several several tabs there. You can you click on mute if you want to uh, say something. The audio you mean? Yeah, if, if you're going to talk off camera to someone, you need to mute your mic. Yeah, just, yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to okay. be confusing for everybody okay, else. Okay. Excellent. Okay, okay, so, right. So, the format for this debate, um, we're going to have a 15-minute introduction from both sides. And then we'll move on to a five-minute uh, Q&A or quick-fire rounds for another 30 minutes or so. And towards the end, we'll be taking questions from, from the viewers. Um, depending on the time, we might take five questions for for each uh, each debater, and um, and then we'll do a, a five minute um, a wrap up, um, okay, from from both debaters, and and also I have um I have an, um 
an exciting news for the family as well. So that will be announced towards the end of the debate. So please stay stay with us. Just a couple of um, house rules, of course. Um, I mean, obviously during the live chats, um, I like the admins to to look at the after the live chats and to make sure that if um, that nobody goes against the YouTube community community guidelines. And if this is the case, to obviously mute them or delete the comments. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that the family is, is fully focused on on the debate, so that the questions are are relevant to to the discussions. And um, yeah, and apart from that, I think uh, I think we should be ready to go. So, uh, who would like to go first? Um, we like a toss call, you know. Uh, is, just just you to let you know, JC, I have to go start. eight. I have to go eight. Okay. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like. Uh, uh, him to start, and uh, I'm not going to interrupt. Let him finish what he have. As uh, the topic is on how Jesus, uh, peace upon him, uh, worship as a Muslim, and uh, uh, I would like him to and uh, say whatever he want. Then I will, uh, I will, uh, I will answer accordingly. Okay, just to be clear, Yahya, just to be clear, Yahya, the the title of this debate is who prays like Jesus. Is it Christians or Muslims? Just to be clear, okay. So um, whenever, for example, if 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 you go, if you're gonna be going off the topic, then I, I will have to bring you back to the topic, and and I always I don't want to heckle and disrupt the flow of the debate, okay. So just keep keep um, keep your the things on topic. Um, so who would like to go first? Who would like to make the presentation? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Said for me to go first, and I'm happy to go first if if he's happy with that. Uh, yeah, cool. So let uh, me. Do uh, the I am happy. I am happy. Go first, please. Yeah. Okay. So but let me set up the timer. Bear with me one second, please. You don't have timer. Let him talk as much as he like. No, we're going to no, do yeah, a timer. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. We're going to do a 15-minute introduction once again, so you register what's happening. So it's 15 minutes introduction, and then we're going to have a five-minute Q&A or quick fire rounds. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine with me. It's fine. Okay, okay excellent. So your time, your introduction, Bob Silla, will start now. Okay. JC, if you could give me a five and then a ten... And then a like a warning, just so I can get a monitor of the time. Um, cool. Guys, if you are taking notes, you will need a pen and a paper. Um, I want to welcome Yaya to his Bible study. Um, I'm going to give a a lot of verses, and then if there's any particular points that Yaya would like to drill down on, or if anyone else would like to drill down on in the question session. Um, then we'll discuss them more at length. But as you'll see, there's a lot of material to get through. So I'm just going to give you the references and the points that those references make. And then from there, um, we can drill down into them as we require. So how did Jesus pray? That's the question that we're asking. And do we Christians pray like Jesus? So in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, and in Mark 10, verse 35, Jesus demonstrates that he was in the habit of retreating from the world to pray. And that's something that we Christians do. We even have retreat centers uh, where Christians can go to do prayer in isolation. And prayer in isolation is a key part of Christian spirituality. In Luke chapter 6, verse 12, and in Luke chapter 9, verse 28, and in Matthew 6, and in Luke 18, verse, oh, sorry, in so my apologies, in Luke 6, 12, and in Luke 9, 28, we see that our Lord um, practiced praying for the whole of the night and he would often retreat onto a mountain. Uh, by contrast, Muhammad specifically um, commands that uh, prayer should only be done through half of the night and not for the whole of the night. In Matthew 6, Luke 18, verse 12, and in Mark 11, verse 25, we can see that standing is the assumed position of prayer. And if you ever go to a Christian church, you will see that Christians on the whole, particularly those well discipled, will stand when they are called to pray. In fact, that's the normative position of the Christian faith. And that was canonized by the Ecumenical Council in 325 under Canon 20. And uh, it is also stated in the church fathers that standing is the normative position of prayer in continuation of how Jesus spoke about it. Um, 
In Matthew chapter 6, Christ condemned public prayer for people's approval. So in terms of the Christians, there is no praying on the street so that everyone can see you pray and that you can make a statement about how Christian you are so or, or how Christianity is dominating. Um, that is not the way that Christians pray because that isn't what Jesus taught. In Luke 22, verse 41 Jesus knelt when he prays just as Christians kneel when they pray I also know that Muslims kneel when they pray as well and I know that Muslims stand and just on, on a general point when it comes to the positions of prayer there's nothing in it Muslims and Christians use pretty much all the same positions that Jesus used with the exception of one which we'll come on to later in Luke 18 um, prayer is we are told by our Lord that prayer should be conducted with a humble heart that is repentant of sin and that within that prayer, you can even do things like symbolic movements, you know, like beating the chest um, as Christians do when they say the confession, um, they will symbolically beat their chest in imitation of the very passage I've quoted in John four twenty four, prayer is to be in spirit and in truth. That's a, a fundamental thing because for Christians, the positions in which you pray and the words that you use are nowhere near as important as the heart intention and the desire is in which you do them, that you're doing them in spirit and truth. In Luke 18, we also see that prayer is to be constant and persevering in calling out to our Father. It is not something that it is to be, um, you know, given up upon. In Matthew 19, 13, and in Mark 8, 25, prayer is to be accompanied by the laying on of hands, particularly uh, when prayer is connected to healing. And to my knowledge, um, and Yaya can correct me if I'm wrong, Muslims do not have a concept of laying on of hands during any form of prayer. In Matthew 26, 36, and in Mark 14, 39, Christ indeed falls prostrate to the floor. However, he's doing so in anguish. And that is often overlooked by Muslims when they quote that verse. Um, there's nothing wrong with using prostration. And I will hopefully share in the chat later on um, evidence that Christ, uh, that Christians use prostration. In fact, I invite any Christian in the chat to simply do a Google search on YouTube, a YouTube search to find Christians prostrating and to post the links for everyone to see them. In Luke 3, 21, the act of prayer and the act of baptism are connected in Christ's baptism and Christ himself in Matthew 28 connects baptism to the Father, Son and Holy Spirit intertwining worship with the Father, Son and Holy Spirit through the act of baptism. In John 4, 1 and 2, uh, shows Jesus' disciples continued the practice of baptism. And in Matthew 28, 19, baptism is done prayerfully in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In Matthew 26, 36, prayer is done as part of a group, not shoulder to shoulder, but each person in, in isolation. So Christians can pray in groups, but they also pray as individuals within those groups, which is very distinct from Islamic ritual prayer, which has to be done shoulder to shoulder. In Matthew 9, 38, Jesus connects prayer with the kingdom of God. And that kingdom of God is connected to the messianic promises of the Old Testament. Mark 13, 8, prayers are to be specific and contextual. Jesus asks us to pray to the Father for the things that we need. By contrast, Islamic prayer is ritualistic and the repetition of Arabic phrases, as we will see later. In Luke 22, 32, we are to pray for one another. In Islamic prayers, the prayers that you give are given to you by um Muhammad in the hadiths and I do not find in them a, a sort of specific contextualized praying for one another though there are prayers for one another in a general sense in John 17 1 and John 11 verse 4 
And in Luke 9, verse 16, Jesus specifically looks up towards heaven. By contrast, Muslims are forbidden by Muhammad to look up to heaven. They are instructed to look to the ground and not to look to heaven. So quite different. In Luke 24, verse 50, Jesus lifts up his hands, which I know Muslims do. In Matthew 3, verse 2, Christ preached and honoured the name Yahweh, and that was the name that he was worshipping towards. Yahweh is obviously the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaiah, the God of all the prophets of the Old Testament, and it's the name of the God that Christ spoke in, but it is not a God that ever tripped off the lips of Muhammad. In Luke 24, verse 50, Christ lifts up his hands. Interestingly, in Luke 21, 36, and in Luke 18, verses 1 to 8, and in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, showing the continuation of the apostolic tradition, um, prayer is to be done without ceasing. By contrast, Muhammad prohibits prayer at specific times in the day. So, for instance, after the morning prayer, prayer is forbidden until the um, second prayer of the day. Um, so there's no connection there. There's no comparison between how uh, Muslims and Christians pray because Christians believe that you should pray continuously. In Mark eleven twenty four and in John fifteen seven, um, Christians are called to pray with confidence that the Father will answer their prayers. By contrast, Muslims can only say Inshallah. That is, if God is willing. In John seven uh, verse thirty eight. And in John 9, 7, Christ takes the liturgical uh, calendar of um, Judaism and applies it to himself personally. Now, the calendar of Judaism explains the religiosity, explains the kinds of things that Jews are praying about and are praying for. It's connected to their history. But Jesus takes these symbols and applies them to himself, calling himself the living water. Um, he's essentially taking the liturgical calendar of Judaism and aspects of Judaism, like he does with the Sabbath, and places himself above them or as their basis. Now, in Luke chapter 1, verse 10 um, we see that the the centrality of the jewish temple um, within worship and the jewish temple is meant to be the place where god's presence is there's a sacrificial system and all of jesus's jewish prayers needed to be understood within that mosaic covenant something that muhammad is not familiar with nor does he use. Finally, Christ teaches us how to pray in Matthew 6 and in Luke 11, which we call the Lord's Prayer. Um, and in this prayer, which is commonly known to all Christians, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are, this is the, the, the fundamental prayer of Christians and it is something that we use. We never see Muhammad using anything like that. Um, he doesn't address God as Father, whereas Christ does address God as Father, and he encourages us to dress, address God as Father as well. Um, JC, could I just have a time check? Three minutes. So in the Lord's Prayer, we see that, for instance, that each Jewish community had their own prayers. Um, it states clearly, as John taught his disciples, so Christ should teach his. That prayer is normally to be done alone and discreetly that we are not to use meaningless, endless repetitions um, in much the same way that if you repeat Arabic phrases you don't understand, 
and God is described as father. God's name, which is Yahweh, is considered sacred. The kingdom of God is considered to be coming upon the earth and the full manifestation of God's rule is there at the time of Jesus on the whole earth, not something that's specific to the Jews. We call out for daily provision and sin is considered to be a debt that needs to be forgiven. I believe I've got a few more minutes. And so to wrap up in my last two minutes, what I want to sort of draw out is, and I invite Yaya to sort of drill into any particular aspects that he wants to and, and anyone in the audience questioning. But whilst, yes, there are certain commonalities in posture, and even in certain commonalities in temperaments that, that fundamentally Christians pray in a way that mark, it lines up with Christ's teaching and Christ's example, whereas Muslims do not. And just one example of that is that I would ask Yahya to show me where Jesus sat and prayed. Um, because that's an essential part of the units of prayer within Islam, um, but we never see Jesus sitting and praying. Um, whereas Christians follow all of his postures, all of his words, and his example to pray continuously. And so Islam doesn't pray, Muslims don't pray in a way that Jesus taught. In fact, Muslims are told very clearly by Muhammad, pray as you have seen me pray. So they shouldn't even be boasting that they pray like Jesus. They should be boasting that they pray like Muhammad. You have, you have another 50 seconds, Bob. I don't think I need it. Cool. Okay, so let me reset the time. Yahya, please bear with me. Are you ready, Yahya? I am ready. Your time starts, your time uh, starts now. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, the introduction. And uh, I would like to confirm that uh, we, we Muslim, we abide by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commandment for us to pray. And we pray in spirit and in faith and uh, in total submission to our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who said in the Quran, O who you believe, bow down, prostrate yourself and adore your Lord. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, irka'u wasjudu, wa'abudu rabbakum wa fa'alu al-khayra la'allakum tuflihun. And do good deed so you might be successful in the other life. Uh, regarding the Christian worship, uh, I don't think the Christian are uh, know the difference between worship and praise. Uh, praise is a glorify God for the blessing from him, while worship is devotion to God, is to bow down in submission and adore and give him praise, thanks, glory, and total submission as a servant to God. A prayer is to ask God something which benefit you or benefit somebody close to you or friend or brother. And we are allowed to pray for our brother, our uh, family, uh, our uh, follower, worshiper, uh, uh, believer, and even allowed to pray for non-believer so God will open their heart uh, to the true belief which we believe Islam is the total submission to Almighty God, one God, and Jesus peace upon him, the Lord our God is one, and this is the one we worship. God, God will not benefit from us, but God, we will benefit us by praying to him as he will accept us as his servant obedient to him, and he will benefit and respond and bestow his grace upon us. And uh, uh, through, uh, uh, through uh, the similarity between Muslim and, and people of the book, including Jesus, is uh, we all supplicate, we all stand, we all bow down, we all prostrate on the floor and submission to Almighty God, asking him whatever we want to ask him, and uh, seek him and refuge when we are in distress, and we seek him 
and takes him and a time of distress and time of good we take him for what he bestow on us that we being created and being given all what on earth for our comfort and uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, why we we submit to him and worship him and uh, and total submission uh, i would like to say that uh, the difference between jesus and uh, prophet muhammad jesus his ministry was not accomplished because he preached only for three years and even he said i have plenty to to say and plenty to do but you cannot uh, ab be able to to carry on, uh, to to take it because i have to go and i will pray to the father he will send you somebody who will establish uh, a, a law and he will establish the, the spirit of truth and he will tell you everything about about right and wrong and he will uh, glorify me uh, prophet muhammad i guess is the one who come and glorify uh, glorify jesus peace upon him as the quran mentioned him 25 times uh, specifically and name and talk about him and uh, he is one of the greatest greatest prophet of uh, of islam and we believe that all uh, the prophet and messenger before people of the book who submit and believe in one god and they are muslim and and an action and, and practical uh, practical way because they submit and worship only one god i will uh, 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 now uh, give some uh, some reference from the bible i would like everyone uh, to write it down because it's all related how the people of the book worship god and we will see at the end the similarity between uh, the muslim and people of the book according to the bible uh, beside jesus peace upon him he acted as a muslim as he submit obey serve praise and glorify and fell on his face and i i i uh, confirm that he used to uh, always isolate uh, himself and pray by himself and uh, even when uh, his apostle asked him to teach them how to pray uh, he uh, gives them uh, the prayer of the lord only but th th he didn't even instruct them to pray like the way he does it uh, as uh, 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 as uh, bob uh, mentioned that uh, uh, jesus when he performed any miracle he uh, put his hand up to to heaven and thanks and glorify god who give him the permission to perform this miracle uh, he uh, uh, as well he prostrate and he went down on his face when he was in stress and prayed to god to save him from death as uh, the last night before he was arrested according to uh, to the bible before the crucifixion uh, i would like now uh, to to start uh, give reference how much time i have Okay, uh, I will now start to give a confirmation of the prayer of the people of the book, and I give reference uh, Joshua five fourteen, Numbers twenty six, and Joshua fell on his face to the to earth and did worship. Numbers. They fell upon their faces, Moses and Aaron, both of them. And Numbers 20, verse number 6, Moses and Aaron, they fell upon their faces. And Genesis 17, 3, we see that Abraham fell on his face. And Revelation 7, 11, they, we are talking about many people, they fell on their faces before uh, the throne of and worship God before the throne and worship God. Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, 8 6, they bow their head and worship the Lord, their, their faces to the ground. 1 Chronicle 21 16, 
David and the elder fell on their faces. So they are worshiping God and, and uh, not one, but in, in, in a group. Uh, we have, we go to Judges 13, 20, uh, Mona and his wife, they fell on, on their faces. 1 Samuel 20, 41, David fell on his face. 1 King 18, 42, Eliah, Eliah, he bent down to the ground and put his face between his knee and he worshiped God. 1 King 18, 39, all the people saw this. They all fell to the ground and prostrate to, to God. Uh, we have uh, Slam 22, 29, Slam 22, 29, and 95, verse number six and seven, they all bow down and kneel in front of their maker. Last, not least, Ezekiel 9, 8, uh, they are talking about the angel and revelation 7 11 the angel they fall on their faces and praise and glorify god the only god the creator while we see in luke 6 12 jesus pray all night and he he teach his apostle uh, to teach repentance and forgiveness even in Luke 24, 47. And Mark 6, 41, he, Jesus peace upon him, he takes the five loaves and the two fish and look up to heaven and he gave thanks to the creator who blessed the, who blessed the fish and the love. So he uh, fed uh, around 5,000 people. So Jesus, as he said, I can do nothing of myself and the, uh, all the miracle he performed is he performed by the permission of his father. And when I say the father, we, our spirit, all of us as a human, it coming from the father because the spirit doesn't die and our spirit is from God. And, and our spirit, uh, is from God. That's why we belong to God. God, he is our owner and we are in spirit, his children. But I don't want to mix the children with, with servant because when we say we are children of God, it means that we will start to have a pride and we don't submit in total position to the, our creator. Because God, he doesn't beget or begotten. But prayers, he creates. Prayers, uh, we, are, we are. Sorry? Stick to yeah, the topics. Uh, prayers. Uh, uh, prayer. prayer. Uh, uh, it's, all, it's all related. Because if we are children, we must not submit in total to our creator. And we are a creation of God. And Jesus, peace upon him, he is uh, come to life by the Holy Spirit, and he come, uh, he didn't have life by himself, he was given life by the Father who gave life for all the creation, and without the Father, we, we don't, without the Father, we are not an existent, we are exist just because the Father, he allow us to exist. Uh, uh, Jesus, peace upon him, Teach, uh, teach that our prayer should be toward God, not toward anybody else, and not to associate anyone beside God to worship. As he said uh, uh, to all the believers to do the will of God, and the will of God that we submit to him in total, and pray and praise and glorify and submit and serve the Almighty God. Uh, I am done. You can you can uh, say whatever you want. Thank you.
Thank you, Yakia. Thank you, Bob. Thank you guys for providing references for your arguments. So we will, for just so, just for you guys who just joined in the uh, live chat, mm -hmm. we have an, uh, obviously a debate on whether who actually prays like, like Muslims, is it Jesus and is it, uh, is, it the, uh, is it Christians or is it the Muslims? So I do appreciate you guys have uh, provided references. So now we're going to move on to a uh, five minute Q&A or quick fire rounds. I don't know how you're going to, how, how you guys are we going to do two rounds? Are we going to do two rounds of Q and A? So how about I I lead five minutes of Q and A, and then Yaya leads five minutes of Q and A. So I ask Yaya questions, he has to answer, but not ask questions, and then he can ask me questions, but I have to answer, but not ask. Yeah, are you, are you happy with that, Yaya? Uh, I'm okay. I will uh, I will answer any question. Uh, from Bob or from the audience, and I would like uh, uh, okay. everybody, if they it's have any issue, yeah. uh, to ask. Yes, cool. Nice one. Okay, okay excellent. So, right. Your five minutes will start. Hold on a second, Bob. So, we're going to move on into a five-minute Q&A, starting with Bob now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, did Jesus address God as Father? Yes, he did. Do Christians address God as Father? Yes, they did. Do Muslims address God as Father? No, they didn't. Do Chris, did, did Christ prostrate in prayer? He did. Do Christians prostrate in prayer? I guess they only need, but they don't fall on their faces to pray. Okay, Christians, just to let you know, I think Yaya's a little ignorant here. Christians do prostrate in prayer. I've sent some examples in the private chat. I don't know if JC can see them, um, but if you can, JC, if in the private chat, could you share them in the live comments? And I, again, I would just invite any Christians who's watching this just to go on YouTube, type in the words Christian prostration, and then see the bunch of videos that come up and just share them in the group chat for everybody. Christians do prostrate. Um, yeah, yeah. You um, did Jesus look up towards heaven? Yes, he did. Do Christians look up towards heaven when they pray? I reckon they do. They they've always done that, yeah, yeah. Tell me, do Muslims look up towards heaven when they pray? When we ask, we open our hand, and do we you look sometimes up to heaven? look up to, to heaven. We do. We do. Then I want to correct you, Yaya, because I don't think you know your dean as well as you think you do. Because in Sahih al-Bukhari, it states that you are forbidden from looking up. That actually you have to look down towards the ground where you're going to prostrate. And other Muslims will be able to confirm this. You're commanded to look down to the point of prostration. You're not to look up towards heaven you're actually instructed not to look up towards heaven um now may i answer yeah, may yes, I answer? yes of course of course uh we know that almighty god our god is in heaven and he's above his throne so when we put our hand or kneel down and look up if we are looking uh, up with a uh, total uh, respect and love and whoever uh, told you about this hadith that we are forbidden to look up uh, this is wrong because we are uh, advised to look down when we are actually uh, practicing the prayer but when, when we are doing supplication we can look up and Bukhari he came uh, 185 years I don't say that yeah, the yeah, prophet, yeah, yeah. The this prophet, is what Bukhari we know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, this uh, is what Bukhari I, says. I have, Bukhari, I have is, Quran. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah. is Bob's turn. It's Bob's turn to ask uh, yeah, yeah. you. Can, yeah, yeah. can, can I finish go. without interruption? Yeah, yeah, you, I heard you. You can, said you could look can, up. I heard you. Yeah, can, yeah, I heard you. You said you could look can up. Can I finish without yeah, interruption? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you're just, you're just filling the time, bro. It, this is what Bukhari says, and this is what I'd like you to respond to. When the prophet performed prayer, his eyesight did not leave the place of prostration and he forbade us from looking up at the sky or looking around in prayer. 
That's a quote from Sahih al-Bukhari. Could you respond to that, please? One minute, Bob. The prophet, the prophet, and the and one of the battle, uh, even his cover fell off his uh, shoulder as he was doing supplication to Almighty God and Abu Bakr. He came and he put it and he told him, God will respond to you because he was in stress. So the prophet, he looked up to heaven, he raised his hand and he uh, prayed to God to give us, uh, to give us, and uh, to give us, uh, to give the prophet victory. And we do the same. So and, the hadiths uh, contradict nothing, one another. Uh, yes. Yes, I agree. The hadiths do contradict one another. One final question: um, Our Christ yes. said that the Christ said that we are to pray continuously. Does m Christians do that? Do do Muslims believe that you can pray all the time, or is prayer forbidden at certain times? Uh, the prayer is only forbidden uh, at the time of uh, sunrise and sunset. So, so it is forbidden uh, at certain times. So uh, certain time exactly on the sun, sunrise and sunset so we are not worshiping the sun and uh, that's beside all but Jesus the time said to pray continuously con may, may i may time, i just, before you interrupt me uh, I, answer, uh, answer, answer, uh, answer the question yeah here then uh, the, it's your turn to ask questions uh, Bob. we have a prayer we have a prayer and uh, a specific time five times a day but you can do voluntary prayer whenever you like a remembrance, a remembrance of God, it should be all the time as we love our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Thank you, Yakia. Thank you, Bob. That was your five minutes of, of Q&A. Now, it's your turn now to ask questions to Bob Yakia. So when you're ready, go now. Yes. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, I never watch... Uh, or seen a Christian falling down on their faces as a Jesus or as a Muslim, but they kneel and they uh, uh, kneel in front of uh, of a cross or, or of a statue, uh, and this is actually forbidden as an uh, exodus. God forbid you to take any shape or form or anything. So why and who allow you uh, to bow down uh, to statue? and worship and kiss a statue and kiss uh, uh, object which is not the teaching of uh, but paganism so that's, hey, question. that's fine so he's asking about um our use of statues or, or religious art um and i would take him to um the old testament where the mercy seat is described above the Ark of the Covenant in Exodus. I'll just find it for you. Bear with me. Um, I, I'll, 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 for, for brevity, I won't. I'll just trust that people can do a Google. But if you look up the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat in the Old Testament, God commands that idols be made above the Ark of the Covenant with their wings outstretched over the mercy seat. And this Ark of the Covenant uh, was uh, given its due honor, which is what worship means. We are skippy. It comes from the middle Anglo-Saxon meaning to give due honor. And the Israelites gave it due honor by carrying it in the front of their processions, by carrying it on their shoulders, by no one but the Levite priesthoods touching it or even no one touching it um, or very few people touching it. I can't specifically remember exactly how. But it was the central focus of their worship because the tabernacle was seen to be where God's presence was. And the Jews worshipped God facing towards the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant had two angels with wings outstretched over the mercy seat. So what God is forbidding in Exodus 20 isn't the creation of images. It is the creation. It is, it is the worship of images as gods. That's what's being forbidden in Exodus 20. And if the Jewish people okay, could do can it, I respond? Uh, yes, certainly. This is this is your question time. Uh, so, in Exodus twenty uh, three and four, you shall not make for yourself an idol or form or anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or the water below, uh, and you shall not bow down to them or worship them. And then, you, what you have just said—that means God 
uh, is contradicting himself and asking the Jew to prostrate and to something. But I can confirm that God, God is uh, all uh, the, pro the prostration and uh, worship is uh, toward toward Him, and we uh, we as a Muslim we unite and looking. Uh, up can I reply? This is a statement Mecca. or a question. Let, can let, I reply? Let, this let is me, a. You, just, you've made us. Do you uh, want me to reply to uh, your point? I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. And you just uh, uh, cut me off. Yeah, yeah. What I'm you, saying you've is, made yeah, yeah. Point. yeah, yeah. Please ask uh, the question. No, uh, so when I'm the doing question, my you point, just please, please uh, 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 have some manner. When I'm doing my point, please don't interrupt me. I don't interrupt you. Just show me respect as I show you. Yeah, yeah. We just want you to follow yes. the format of the debate. So we are now on I'm a, a Q&A session, Q &A session right now. I'm so I'm stay your, stay your questions so we I, can I, carry I'm, on with the flow of the debate. I'm explaining. What, what's your question, Yaya? I'm what's the question, Yaya? I don't, I don't have any more questions. Uh, okay, what allow, I me said, to allow me to respond then, because you, you, you quoted Exodus 20, verses 1 and, and to, to 6 or 1 and 3, but you, you ignored the point that I made, that in Exodus 25, so it's the same book, verse 17, it reads, You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. You shall make two cherubim of gold, make them of hammered work at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other end. And you shall make the cherubim of one piece with the mercy seat as its two ends. So God who commands that you shouldn't worship graven images as gods in Exodus 20 commands the creation of a graven image in Exodus 25. So clearly what's being prohibited is worshipping the images as gods, not the creation of images, nor giving them their due respect. And if you know Exodus, Yahya, you'll know that the Ark of the Covenant was the central foci of Jewish worship. That was the very reason why the temple was built to house the Ark of the Covenant and the Ark of the Covenant had two images on top of it so that isn't a problem because if the Jews can worship in the direction of an image so can a Christian so long as we Time. don't worship the image as a God Time. Okay, okay. That, thank, uh, you thank you for, uh, th thank you for thank the you. confirmation you that thank God you, okay. is contradicting, God contradicting himself and asking his people to worship other than him by bringing uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, a place or, or or a space, but I can yeah. confirm that the, the Jew the Jew I don't think they worship uh, the material, but they worship the invisible God. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Yahya. Okay, now um, Bob, your five minutes starts. Now, okay. So I I I, I want to end my five minutes um, by 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 pointing out some of the inconsistencies that um, Yaya has used. He has completely proven the point that prostration is an acceptable form of Christian worship. And if you're not a Christian, and if you're a Christian who isn't using prostration in worship, I encourage you to do so. My church uses prostration in worship. I know lots of other Christian fellowships that use prostration in worship. The Catholic Church uses prostration in worship. The Coptic Church uses prostration in worship. The Orthodox uses prostration in worship. If you're part of a Reformed or Protestant church and you're not using prostration in worship, get with the program. Everyone's doing it. All the great people did it. So should you. So. That being said, that doesn't prove that Muslims are praying like Jesus, because it's not good enough simply to point out all the things that are similar. You have to take into account all the things that are dissimilar. And I would like to challenge Yahya and any Muslim who's listening to show me how well-educated Christian worship is dissimilar to the way that our Lord worshipped. We use all the positions that he did. We knelt, we stand, we prostrate, we look up to heaven, we lift up our hands, we call God our Father, we seek to worship in spirit and truth. So that's, that's one thing I'd like to uh, um, ask. The other thing I'd like to ask is, you know, um, Salat is a fundamental principle of Islam, 
you would think that it would be well explained in the Quran, and yet none of the positions, apart from standing and prostrating, are actually described in the Quran. The fact that they are units uh, of prayer um, is, is, is in Islamic concept of worship, but Jesus didn't pray by units. That's not a, a, a thing that Jesus taught. Can Yahya show me where Jesus taught to pray in units of prayer? You know, that you've got, the, that you do, um, let's have a look, that you do uh, that you do two units in the morning, four in the afternoon, four later on, four in the evening, and four and and four at night. The three, sorry, in the Maghrib and, and four at night prayer. Jesus never taught anything like that. Jesus said to pray continuously, but yet Muhammad strictly and Yahya's confirmed they strictly forbade prayer at certain times. He's he's whenever he says that you can pray it so all the way through, that's a contradiction to what Jesus said. Jesus said to pray specifically and contextually to address God as Father with confidence that He would hear our prayer, not to use babble, not to re use endless repetitions. But if you look at the units of prayer that is exactly what muslims do they recite they repeat arabic phrases repeatedly like subhana rabbi yal al allah now my pronunciation is probably off yeah um yeah, yeah can correct me or alahu liman ham hamida you know th these phrases are repeated now most muslims don't know arabic which means that they are literally repeating babble um, this is not the way that Jesus taught how to pray. He taught to pray in your own language. He taught to pray without endless repetition, without meaningless repetition, that it's got to be done in spirit and truth. He taught that prayer should be contextualized. He didn't do, he didn't teach the idea of standing shoulder to shoulder. Just because Jesus prostrated and just because Muslims prostrate, well, Christians prostrate as well. So what have you proven there? nothing you know it's it's a a fallacious argument if you are addressing another god by another term in another way bearing in mind jesus face towards jerusalem while he prays towards mecca it, it's just absolute rubbish to say that that muslims pray like jesus muslims pray like muhammad they claim to pray like muhammad that's actually what they're told to do by muhammad he says pray as you have seen me pray those are the words of muhammad according to the hadiths so why on earth muslims are making a big deal of the fact that they prostrate and jesus prostrated yaya forgot the fact that jesus prostrated in a moment of anguish Prostration is an acceptable form of Christian worship, and you should be doing it if you are a Christian. But it doesn't prove just because Muslims prostrate and Jesus prostrate that Muslims pray like Jesus, because it ignores all the ways in which they are dissimilar. And I'm yet to see any reason to believe that we Christians are not praying like Jesus. All Yahya essentially did was say, Jesus prostrates, Muslims prostrate, therefore we pray like Jesus. And he ignored all the ways in which they don't pray like Jesus. And he hasn't given any good reasons why Christians don't pray like Jesus. We worship one God. We believe in one God. That is exactly what Jesus believed. That is exactly Time. what Jesus did. Time. Okay, thank you there, uh, Bob Sila. So, were you ready, Yahya? Your five minutes will start yeah, now. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, first... Does the Christian fall on their faces to worship God? Does the Christian worship worship? Who do they worship? The Father or the Son? Uh, again, uh, uh, to worship and who they worship? Uh, and the, the Arabic phrases he he said, uh, 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 which he said is meaningless. The Arabic phrases you can Google it and see what does it mean uh, on Google and don't call it meaningless because 1.6 billion uh, do this prayer in Arabic and the prophet peace upon him and like uh, your Jesus the prophet 18 years he continued uh, uh, the prayer and he advised uh, uh, his believer the believer the follower of Islam a prophet uh, the prophet to pray as you see me prayer and we pray five times. And uh, Jesus, you said, he pray all the time. Uh, can you do prayer uh, 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 
all the time without doing any work or anything, but the rem rememberness of God should be always on our tongue and our mind. This is called love to God. So uh, our prayer, our prayer is a specific time, is an uh, obligatory duty on us as we commit uh, to our creator. And as I show, I show you uh, as the previous people of the book, the Jew, uh, how uh, they uh, pray and group and individual and worship only one God. Hey, dude, and uh, uh, Jesus, uh, you said he uh, faced toward Jerusalem. Don't, for don't forget that we Muslim, we worship two years toward Jerusalem to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he command his prophet to turn and to turn toward Mecca and we start uh, as all Muslim are around the globe they face toward one and unity toward one one place to worship Almighty God who is in heaven not on earth but this is we call it unity and worship of the oneness of God and and uh, uh, I never seen any Christian who praying by falling on his face and worshiping. All what I see in the churches when uh, when I go uh, with my wife sometimes or to Spain, all of them uh, they stand or they kneel in front of their desk and they do uh, the cross, uh, the symbol of the humiliation of Jesus. I'm finished. You have another. You have another minute and a half, Yahya. I you don't done? need it. Okay. No, so I, let me reset. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, there, Yahya. Let me reset the time for Bob Silla. And your time. Uh, you you don't have you don't have a question from the people. No, no. We're gonna. We done two minutes of. Sorry, we done two rounds each. Two five minute rounds each. This will be the third round for Bob. And then we, we can we can we can have another another round, and then we can move on to questions from from the viewers. Is that okay, or would you like okay. to go backwards and forth? Fine, okay, so fine. this will be fine, no problem. All right, cool. So this will be the third round of Q and A for Bob. Your five minutes starts now. So I, I'm questioning Yaya, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Yaya, uh, Jesus called God Father. Why do Muslims not call God Father? I already explained that. So you don't pray like Jesus then? No. Yeah, uh, calling Thank you. God Father, calling God Father is not uh, uh, praying. You're calling someone, that means you're not praying to. You are calling someone. Any other okay. question? So um, in terms of, in terms of uh, times that are forbidden to pray, um, you're not supposed to pray during uh, the latter part of the night or after the morning prayers, but Jesus said to pray continuously. Um, why, why do Muslims contradict Jesus there? Because as a prayer, we don't pray when the sunrise or the sunset, but you can remember God anytime and your heart or by your tongue. And Jesus, peace upon him, did he pray night and day and he didn't do but prayer or he was preaching and he going from one place to another and eat and drink and uh, go to toilet and uh, uh, talk to his, uh, his people and advising his apostle. Uh, did he pray? Uh, uh, we, are not, we are not created to just uh, uh, pray without a stop. This okay, is yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, nobody will work. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. In Luke, in Luke chapter six, verse twelve, and in Luke nine, verse twenty-eight, Jesus spends all night in prayer. But Muhammad says that you don't yeah. pray for the second half of the night before the morning prayer. Uh, okay, you want me to respond to this? Yes, I want you to address yeah. that. Uh, the prophet, peace upon him, uh, and the Quran we can see that he, most of the time, uh, 
spend a lot of time uh, during the, the night praying to God. And even his wife, she told him, uh, why you pray all, all the night? And even uh, they say that his feet was swollen. And he told her, I, I cannot be uh, a, 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 a grateful uh, servant to Almighty God. But God uh, knows that we cannot just to stay night and day just in a prayer because people have work, people have do, and everything must be balanced in life. So uh, it's, okay. it's yeah, yeah. normal. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I only, the, the, my questions was really specific. I, I do want to come to something that you, you, you know, you talked about um, the five daily prayers in Islam, which are yep. unheard of to Jesus. Jesus didn't teach five daily prayers. Um, Two minutes. But but he, on on the night journey that Muhammad took, um, he he goes and he negotiates the prayer down with Allah from fifty to five, so that the five count as fifty, and he and he goes backwards and forwards between Moses and Allah because every time yeah. he passes Moses, Moses says, "No, nah, that's too much. The people can't take it. Go back and yeah. ask for less." Can you show yes. me where Jesus negotiates with God about how many times we should pray or where any other prophet negotiates with God about how many times we should pray? Uh, no, but I can show you that when, when Jesus uh, spent most of the night digging his head on the floor to be saved, he was rejected by God. Uh, at least uh, our God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uh, multiply the prayer, which is five to fifty. And th this th is no, you the difference that's between fine. our God and your God. Okay, that's fine. So the answer is no, it's not like Jesus. So another thing is that the temple worship, that the context in which Jesus understood his prayers, he often is seen in the temple. This is where he prayed. And the temple worship had the idea of the priesthood and it had the idea of the sacrificial system. So priesthood, temple, sacrificial system. Where are those? And, and Jesus was doing his prayers within that context. Priesthood, temple, sacrificial system. Jesus was doing his prayers in that context. Where's that context in Islam? Uh, didn't, didn't Jesus worship uh, uh, by the mountain? And uh, he worship everywhere he goes? He did or not? You've misunderstood my question. My, yeah, my uh, question no, no, is uh, the fact... First, uh, uh, rephrase uh, 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 I, I, understand. Again, I, I understand, okay. but but Please Jesus, because... Jesus as well, Jesus as well, he worshipped by the mountain. He worshipped everywhere. He went with his uh, uh, with his apostle. So he used to to go by himself, uh, grow himself and worship. Uh, when he worshipped and the temple and the sacrifice, we we do sacri sacrifice and the Eid al Adha. Uh, the sacrifice uh, uh, feast uh, and similar uh, when we celebrate uh, 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 our forefather uh, prophet uh, Ibrahim peace upon him when he uh, tried to sacrifice his his son and God save his son and replace it with a goat and we do it every year so, while, you, don't have while a temple, father, so you don't have a temple or a yeah, priesthood then while your father while your father uh, he sacrificed his son to, to do, say, do you, do you uh, have forgive your sin instead of do, have some mercy yeah, yeah. on please, you please, and yeah, forgive yeah. you when you yeah, repent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah please answer the question. Please answer Bob's question, uh, Yahya, yeah, please. I'm, I'm, I'm answering. Priesthood. In Sorry. Say it again, again, Bob. Ask him again. Do you say have a again, priesthood? Do you, ha do you have a priesthood in Islam? That's the last question. No, we don't have we don't have priesthood. We have a scholar, and we have people who study, and uh, uh, they are different. Uh, there are some uh, Quran who recite the Quran. Uh, there are some people, scholar, who understand about Hadith, who understand about uh, Quran. And so no priesthood like Jesus. No priesthood like Jesus. But no, no priesthood. No, okay, like Jesus. Jesus. No, like Jesus. Okay, thank you. There's no, no priesthood I, I like Jesus. No. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you, your turn thank to you. ask questions. Thank, thank you both. So, okay, Yakia, yeah, your five minutes begins now. Uh, what do What do you mean with the priesthood? Okay, it's a good question. So, in the Old Testament, in the Mosaic Covenant, God establishes a Levitical priesthood. 
and that Levitical priesthood is connected to the tribe of Levi. And these are the people that administer the ordinances of the temple and of the Mosaic covenant. There's another priesthood that's identified in Genesis, which is the priesthood of Melchizedek, but that is the only time that we see it, and we don't see it again until the new covenant. When Christ came in his life, he lived out his life in the Mosaic Covenant, which means that he lived out his prayers within the context of a temple, the sacrificial system, mm, and mm. the priesthood. Christians in the New Covenant believe that we are all priests. We are a holy nation and a royal priesthood. We even have members of our own community that we specifically call priests because they have a special role within our community to perform certain ordinances of the temple which is the body of christ so there is a temple and there is a priesthood and then there is sacrifice the sacrifice of christ who is the lamb of god and we christians offer up our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice to our god which is our act of worship as a sensible people so we have the priesthood we have the temple and we have the sacrifice this is exactly an imagery, a symmetry of what the Jewish people had when Jesus was praying here on earth, our Lord. By contrast, Islam has none of those things. Okay. Uh, do you consider uh, Jesus as uh, uh, head of the priest or, or a high priest? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, why why uh, you accept Jesus as a high priest or son of God, or God himself, and he, uh, he, he is calling the children, uh, the Jew children, and non-Jew, uh, what do you, why you accepted that he calling us Gentiles, uh, dogs, swine, and, uh, and slave, and dogs, uh, to, to the children, why you accept that? Okay, I'm not so sh so sure that that is connected to prayer. So I, I'll connect it to prayer as best as I can. Christ in Hebrews because, is called, as you said, priesthood. Because Christ in the book of Hebrews is called our high priest. He is he is given the status as one who intercedes between God and man. He stands as the intermediary between God and man, and this is the role of a priest. He's one who stands and makes intercession the one who stands between god and the people and this is what and this is what our lord does and this is why he is the great high priest and so the priesthood of the levitical priesthood and the the, the priesthood of melchizedek are, are, are found to be in christ who is the embodiment of them both and we continue in his priesthood we are a, a royal priesthood as christians this is this is the new uh, covenant address, that we are all. Can you, can, uh, I was addressing okay, the matter connected address, to prayer. Uh, okay, can you address my specific uh, question? Why you accept a racist who call other than the Jew uh, dogs, swine, and slave? Can that's, you why you accept him? Yes, uh, I do. And he this, is this, that's not Jew. connected to prayer, though. Yeah, yeah. Not Keep it connected. on topic. Yeah, so yeah, you accept him. It's not connected even so to prayer. You accept him. It's not connected, but you accept him as a racist, but uh, you accept no, that you are a dog racist. or a swine. No, it's not, not racist. racist. No, you do. No, let, let, allow me Matthew, to explain then. I mean, I don't know Matthew, if JC wants me to answer this. No, 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 uh, not six, Bob, Bob, six, uh, seven, Yakia. Yakia, um, as I mentioned to you in the beginning, okay, I would like you guys to stick to the format. Okay, so not just a format, but also on the topic. The topic here is prayers. Do Muslims pray like Jesus or do Christians pray like Jesus? So keep keep on that, okay? So we still have 30 minutes. Sorry, 30 seconds for Yahya to complete his question. I refuse even to pray like someone who is racist to me. And that's the way I have dignity. And you said you pray to the Father. Uh, how come you pray to the Father and the Son uh, and the Son at the same time? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're that's a, that's an actual question. So, okay. in, in, in answer, wait, wait, uh, let me reset this. Godzilla. Thank you. Bob, you start time now. Starts now. Am I responding to his last question or asking my own? 
Oh, uh, okay. you want to respond? To his yeah, question I, should then... I, I should have addressed the last question he asked. Fair so, enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah fair enough. Okay, cool. respond to him. Okay, so so uh, in response, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 reality is that the ideas of racism is a is a modern day construct. Um, the Jew, the the Samar the the woman that Christ was speaking to would not have interpreted it in the way that we interpret it today with modern sensibilities. Um, uh, that was just sort of common currency of language in those days, and all nations spoke like that of one another. In terms of worshipping God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we do it because baptism that was brought by the prophet John, who was the last prophet of the Old Covenant, was used as the initiation of repentance uh, to to embody people into the community waiting for the Messiah. And it, it was obviously connected to prayer. At Jesus' baptism, the Greek says that as he was being baptized and praying, these two things are synonymous. They go together. You can't pray without being baptized. You can't be baptized without praying. Christ himself links this, the, the, the baptism, which his own disciples continued to do the baptism of John until the Great Commission in Ma Matthew 28, when he sends out the disciples into all nations, teaching them baptizing in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The act, the sacrament of baptism is also an act of worship. It's connected to prayer. So we're being instructed to worship and to pray to the Father, Son and Holy Spirit because we are being initiated into the community of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Bob. Okay, Thank can you, Bob. I ask you something? I'll, I'll, no, 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 it's my turn no, no, now. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's his okay. turn now. It's, it's five minutes. So your five minutes, Bob, starts okay. now. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to um, more to the Islamic concept of prayer. Would you agree that most Muslims are not Arabs? Yes. Would you agree that most non-Arabs don't know Arabic? Yes. Would you agree that if you are reciting things that you don't understand, you're just making noises? Yes. Would you agree, therefore, that if you don't understand what you're saying in Arabic, you're just babbling? Yes. Did Jesus say that you should babble? I don't, uh, I don't think that he, he asked people to, to babble. No, that's absolutely right. In Matthew, in Matthew um, six, he actually forbids it. He says, "Do not use meaningless, endless repetitions." Would you agree that in it, the, the within the rakas of the units of prayer that you repeat things? What do you, you call? Do you repeat repetition? things? What? Yes, we do. Right. Brilliant. And we've accepted that uh, a, a non-Arab Muslim who doesn't know Arabic, who's just making those noises without any understanding, is babbling. So that is a, would you agree, therefore, that to that person, to that person, that is a meaningless repetition? No, because they investigate and they find out what they are saying and it becomes what they understand. It's not uh, become uh, just noises and uh, empty saying, because uh, every sign would be explained. And uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad, he came not only to the Arab, but God sent him to all uh, uh, last revelation from the Quran to all uh, human race. And everyone and God make it uh, very easy that the Quran even uh, be recited and memorized by non non Arab, and they uh, their translation so they know what they are saying. Okay, so so in terms of someone who doesn't understand the Arabic, who doesn't know what the Arabic is saying, so we're assuming ignorance on the part of this person. They, are they repeating they, something yeah, they, that is yeah. meaningless to them? Uh, le, le, the first time they might say it without understanding, but when they know what they are saying, it will be easier for them to understand the content of what they are saying. And as you can I agree. see, there's I agree. Muslims of, uh, can learn the Arabic. Thank you. I agree, but Thank we you. both agree. And non-Muslim non as well. If they and don't know the Arabic, uh, if they don't know the Arabic, it is it is a meaningless repetition. Now. Um, let me ask you, in terms of in terms of the Islamic concept of prayer, 
Um, you use units of prayer, don't you? Can you show me? Can you show me in you the know. Quran? Can you show me anywhere in the Quran where it tells you to use units of prayer? The prayer is not explained in the Quran, but it's command that we pray uh, before uh, during the night uh, and the morning uh, before before uh, uh, at noon and uh, before be, before sunset and during and the prayer uh, is uh, in specific time and the prophet peace upon him uh, done it for 18 years and yeah, the yeah. prayer is a continuous this, action this, because we've There's only got no 5 minutes for, to, to be as the quran yeah. yeah, because we've only got five minutes. I, I just need you to be quick with your answers. I just need you to be quick with your answers. So you're, you're saying that the, the the prayer is not explained in the Quran. Would you agree that prayer is one of the fundamental aspects of Islam? I agree. And when were the hadiths written? The prayer it continues ongoing from the time of the prophet so even uh, the hadith was written 185 years but the prayer was still is said like as the prophet done it do you share and sunni count the units in the same way 10 seconds uh, as Answer, a sunni yeah. uh, as a sunni yes the the shia and the the sunni count the units differently but that's just pointing out, therefore, that, you know, the idea that there's one uniform way given by Muhammad, the Shia and the Sunni have their differences in how you perform Salat, and that demonstrates that they're not the same way. I think it's only fair to let Yaya re reply to that. Yep. Okay. You can reply to that, Yaya, and then we'll move on to your last five minutes of q and A. I'm not aware of the Shia prayer, but uh, they have their differences in the way they put their hand. Uh, and uh, uh, they have some differences the way uh, they recite the stuff and it doesn't concern me because uh, the prayer as I said is continuous from the time of prophet and we follow the prophet we don't care about people who are doing something different even from the prophet okay thank you thank you Yakia. so your five minutes your last five minutes and then after this we're gonna move, we move on to questions from from the viewers um, because we are sort of scheduling to end the debate at eight o'clock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So your okay. five minutes starts now, Yakia. Uh, why the baptism of uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is contradicting the Lord our God is one, and why only Jesus uh, chose? to send the apostle to all nations after their resurrection. Okay, so in, in answer to the, the first part of the question, um, Yahya doesn't understand the Trinity. The uh, I, 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 I hear this a lot, Muslims saying that the Trinity is a belief in three gods. It is not. It's a belief in one God. And if anyone says any different, they're just demonstrating their ignorance. And that obviously includes the Quran, because the Quran says that the Trinity is three gods as well. So that's the Quran ignorant also. Um, and so it doesn't contradict this idea that there's one God. In fact, if anything, the Trinity is an affirmation of monotheism. Um, and any Christian who understands his faith will agree with that. You know, say amen in the comments if you agree, brothers and sisters. Um, the, the the reality is that, that Yahya is, just doesn't understand that. I didn't catch the second part of your question, Yahya. Could you say it again? Say it again, Yakia, please. The second part of the question. Uh, yeah. Why did Jesus choose after three years or preaching only for the Jew? Why he chose after the resurrection to send his apostle to all nations? And he might he uh, send to all nations that the 12 nation of Israel was scattered on or the, the Gentile is included? Yeah, that's a fair question. In in uh, Luke, when Christ is taken up to the temple, um, his parents encounter 
a gentleman there who is in the temple. Let's just have a look. Uh, she's presented in the temple. Um, called Simeon. And Simeon says this, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. So even at his birth, Christ is declared to be the one that is a light to all peoples. He uh, spoke and he healed uh, for the centurion. He spoke and he preached to the Samaritan. He spoke and he preached the coming of the kingdom of God. And there were Gentiles amongst the people that accepted him in his own day. The Messiah, if you know anything about what the Jews believe about the Messiah, the Messiah was always meant to go out into the nations and establish God's kingdom across the world. And that's exactly what Jesus does. And that's why he sends out the apostles into all the nations. Two minutes, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, didn't, didn't Jesus call Gentiles and Smartian dogs? and uh, swine and pigs and slave to the Jew, why he sent in his apostle after three years preaching only to the children, why he changed his mind and what kind of light when he was preaching, he calling them such and such and such, which is very degrading as he is, as you say, God and flesh, he's degrading, uh, uh, degrading us and calling uh, only the Jew children. I, I, I think that's a bit of a cheap shot coming from a man it who is follows a, a prophet. It is who... a cheap shot. So, sorry. Uh, sorry. Bob, yeah. Uh, Yakia, um, if you don't want to answer, let don't me, answer. Let me, let me remind you once again, Yakia, the topic of the debate is prayer. It's nothing to do with the Trinity or I know, the Incarnation. I know. I know. Please, you, just stick, stick to the topic, yeah, please. He, yeah, yeah, the cool. topic let is that Jesus, he, he, Jesus he, he, he himself... Will, he will answer. He will answer to you now. Okay, uh, I mean, it is off topic, but I, I do think it's a bit of a cheap shot coming from uh, a prophet that called Ethiopians raisin heads, described the devil as looking like a black man, um, you know, and practiced slavery, had sex with a nine year old child, um, sold slaves, bought slaves, permitted his followers to rape people. Um, yeah, um, and, and had sex slaves himself. Yeah, not really worried, to be honest from such criticism okay uh, Last question, just just to re just to respond with uh, two sentence uh the trinity is contradicted and uh, by an isaiah by by 44 uh, verse 6 40 28 45 5 and 46 9 and the prophet he married aisha when she was over 18 years old so Can he didn't that? marry can reply, but it's not on topic. May, may I, uh, let, let me finish first. It's not on topic. Uh, she was, she was, uh, she was yeah, but, but he mentioned it. He mentioned I mentioned it. it because you're off topic. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, thank you enough. for Thank you for that question. Uh, uh, can I just reply oh. to the Trinity bit? I'll ignore I'll, right, that, go. slightly on topic. Um, the, the fact is, and I say this to all Christians. There is zero verses that anyone can quote to you that will contradict the Trinity. None. May I every give you verse, one every, could you could just like every verse, every verse that anyone will use to contradict the Trinity will only affirm something that we believe about the Trinity, because Christians take their view of the Trinity from the entire Bible and what the entire Bible says about God in balance and harmony. So it's impossible that any verse will contradict the Trinity. It will only affirm some aspect of what we believe about the Trinity. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Excellent. Okay, so I'm we've gonna, done I'm gonna 10 recite. minutes. I'm, would, I'm going to recite JC, one. Are we doing one questions Jackia, 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 Jackia. Thank you, thank you for, I am God for your questions. And there no other. I am God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jackia, for your questions. Thank you, Bob, also for your questions. Um, very interesting there. Um, I had to mute you. Sorry, Jackia, because obviously I want to take control, take back control of the of the debate. So now, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be moving on to questions from from the viewers. Um, I'm quite cautious about the time because obviously Bob Silla has, needs to leave at eight o'clock. So I'm just gonna go um, look at the topics, uh, sorry, the questions from, from the family and then uh, I'll give you a chance to answer to them. So 
let me see if people can get me or like to ask okay so this one from steve Mac mclean why do muslims do fasting for one month or rather feasting to eat and drink as much as you can twice a day what's the benefit although this is not on topic um but um yeah if you if you want to answer this if you, you don't have to answer yeah. this if it's not on topic but go ahead yeah. Uh, we, we know that the Christian, uh, they fast for 40 days. And we, uh, as a Muslim, uh, we are commanded by Almighty God, if we have the ability to fast, to fast for three days. And this three days, uh, 30 days, uh, it's uh, a celebration that when God uh, uh, reveals the Quran uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, on the night, and uh, we do it, uh, uh, and uh, the benefit of it is a sp uh, and spirit and uh, and physical and it uh, make us feel with the poor and feel with the people who are not uh, not have any sign. So we share and we we feel for uh, the people who are dying from hunger. Okay, thank you, Yakia. Second question from Sola Scriptura: um, Is it allowed to beat children if they are not praying according to Sunnah Abi Daud? That's a that's for yeah. Uh, I would put. Uh, we uh, uh, the beating when you say beating is never allowed to beat somebody and to make mark on him just to draw his his attention to a duty. But you cannot force anyone, even children, uh, to believe in anything because when a child reach. Uh, maturity, he can choose whatever he wants, and there is no conclusion and religion. And people, they can choose whatever they want. Thank you, Yakia. Um, I'm just looking at the questions here. Um, okay, cool. So we got Ronaldo Saya. Hello, brother. Uh, I'm a Christian, but I have one question to get everything right. I would like to ask Bob, my brother. They say the Bible has changed over the years. I would like to know what exactly changed. This is not on topic, but um, I think you can you can answer this, Bob, to Ronaldo, yeah. even though it's off topic. And yeah, sure. Okay, bro. I mean, the, the thing is, it, it's a case of playing on people's ignorance. They 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 mix a half truth, and then they over exaggerate. What 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 essentially has occurred is that over two thousand years the manuscript evidence demonstrates that we've gained some extra verses that should not be there. So that would be the long ending of Mark. It would be the story of the adulterous woman. Um, and there's a couple of other passages and places where where there's extra stories. Now, the, the fact of the matter is Dr. Bart Ehrman, Dr. Bruce Metzger, uh, Dr. Dan Wallace, th who are textual critical scholars would all agree that zero fundamental Christian doctrine is affected by any textual variant. Now, in just a few minutes, I can't go into all the details that you probably need, Ronaldo, but if you email me, btbsoco at gmail.com, if someone just puts that into the chat, I'll give you a more extensive answer and I'll talk to you about it in more detail. But essentially, yes, there are textual variants. No, they're not as important as people think they are. They're often over-exaggerated in their importance. Zero Christian doctrine doctrines of a fundamental nature are affected in any significant, well, in, in zero way, basically. And that's not my opinion. That's the opinion of multiple scholars. But I'll talk thank to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Now, this is a question for you, Yahya. So get ready. Soko Films. Yahya said Bukhari came 200 years after Mohammed. Why then did he refer to Bukhari later on to make his point? That's for you, Yahya. Uh, I don't understand uh, uh, the question. Uh, after Muhammad, why then he did refer to Bukhari later or uh, make his point? Uh, yeah. Because uh, Bukhari, uh, he gathered authentic hadith and he gathered uh, something else. And when we find one narrator and he have contradiction, any uh, any hadith go against the, the Quran, we 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 believe that it's not authentic, even if it's an authentic hadith. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the question uh, uh, Bob ha has just answered, with every uh, new no, version... No, he's answering revised, a question. I've not replied uh, to any of the yeah, questions. Yeah, no, 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 yes, no. You, yeah, you are, you're answering yeah, the, uh, the viewers. Yeah. Your, yeah, your yeah, Bible... Yeah, yeah, your Bible yeah, no, if he's going to do that, yeah, then I need to reply to his questions it. as well. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, okay, you're answering, you're answering the public. No, you're not answering Bob. So he's, okay. he's finished his answer. Is there another I would question? Like to, I would, I would okay, like to, uh, to, uh, to answer. Excellent. So let me just go through any other questions. If you have a question for for Bob, please write them on the on the comment section because I can I can see. Um, let's see. we okay. I'm gonna off topic again, uh, Bob. But um. Mr. Brown TV is, is being a regular um, as um, okay uh, soccer, film, soccer films viewer, right? So yeah, off topic, but I like you to answer this. Okay, with the hadith, we know who the authors are. We can trace all of them back to their forefathers, but the manuscripts, no one knows who the authors are. Okay, so I like I like you to answer that, Bob, please. Yeah, firstly, uh, Mr. Brown, you've got to realize that the, the Christian faith isn't dependent upon the texts of the Bible. The gospel was being preached before any gospel was written. The gospel was being preached before any of the letters of Paul were ever published. And so simply put, the textual argument doesn't affect the Christian faith because the faith, Christian faith is is founded primarily on the truth of the resurrection and as dr mike lacona said if the resurrection is true if the resurrection happened if jesus rose from the dead christianity is true period and that's true if jesus rose from the dead christianity is true and that that doesn't depend upon the text the text emerges out of that event not the other way around so you're you're, you're accrediting a value there um that actually is not integral to a christian understanding of the text and also you're making a boast that i disagree with you claim you claim that you can trace them back to their forefathers but all that you have is a list that appeared 200 years after muhammad naming a bunch of people and we know at the time that sahih al-bukhari was collected that that bukhari was collecting the hadiths that lots of other spurious hadiths were being circulated in fact the number of fake and spurious hadiths was far greater than the number of reliable hadiths and as we see at the conduct of the dawah team at the corner whenever you quote a sahih hadith that's reliable, that embarrasses them, they just chuck them under the bus. So, so much for your science, you know, so much for your, your sahi science. It, 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 you know, hadith science just, it, it's, you're making claims that you cannot validate. And I would like to see proof, actually, that you can trace them. How do you know that that list wasn't just made up by someone and copied and pasted under a matting that they invented? You, you don't. This is a, a spurious claim. It's an exaggerated claim. Thank you, there, Bob. Thank you, there, Bob. I think we can just have one more question, and uh, yeah, because obviously I'm conscious about time. So the last question, Yakia, is going to be on topic, and for you. So, what Yakia thinks about the forty days and forty nights of Jesus praying and fasting in the desert, and Moses praying and fasting on the uh, Sinai mountain, both out of town? Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Please respond to that, please. Uh, Jesus, so is, is yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Jesus is not but a servant slave to Almighty God, and he done uh, fasting in the desert and praying, meditating, and worshiping his Lord. And uh, this is it doesn't mean anything, but confirms that he was. A human like me and you, that's why he said, my God and your God, my father and your father. And he was obedient servant, uh, seeking the pleasure of uh, uh, and the will of his father. Thank you, Yahya. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you, Yahya. Um, Shall we do a two-minute wrap-up each? I can give we're it. We're going to do a two-minute wrap-up or, or three minutes? Two-minute wrap-up each and two then minutes? close. Yeah. Okay, so since you Please started, start. then will you... Then Yahya start... Uh, sorry, since you, you started let, first, let, let then you go first, and then Yahya... Go last. Is that okay, uh, Yaki? You, you uh, want to go last, or would yeah, you like Bob no, to go first? I go last. I go last. Yeah. Okay. okay. We we'll give the last word to Yaya. So wait, in wait. Short. Let me set up. Oh, the, let me set up. Let me set up the time. And your two minutes starts now, Bob. So in essence, the, the question that we were asking today was this: Who prays like Jesus? Christians or Muslims? <laughs> The, the way in which Jesus prayed was in the context of temple, priest, and sacrifice. Central to the Christian understanding of the new covenant is temple, priest, and sacrifice. 
Christians pray like Jesus. We prostrate like he does. We kneel like he does. We stand like he does. We raise our hands like he does. We look up to heavens like he does. We call God our father like he does. We pray for the things that he prayed for, like the kingdom, the workers. We, 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 I mean, the similarities are a, a, a multitude. Muslims have some similarities with Jesus as well. They stand, they lift their hands, they prostrate, they kneel. And, and Yaya has done a great job of proving that Christians should use prostration in prayer from the Bible, not arguing with what's in the Bible. Totally agree with it. But he's ignored all the dissimilarities and he has not provided one dissimilarity between how Jesus prayed and how we prayed. He hasn't accounted for the fact that we are baptized. Jesus was baptized, but Muhammad was never baptized. He doesn't call God his father. He doesn't face Jerusalem. Jesus prayed in groups, but everyone prayed separately and individually. Muslim commanded lines, rank upon rank, praying shoulder to shoulder, performing units of prayer where you repeat in Arabic things that he told you. Jesus didn't pray like that. Jesus said to pray contextually to your father with confidence. This is how Christians pray. It's not enough to point out one similarity and say, we pray like Jesus prayed. You've got to look at every way that Jesus prayed and then compare. And you see that Christians pray like Jesus. Muslims have some overlap. But at every fundamental level, who they are praying to, how they address him and what they're praying about and the way that they pray is different, apart from the fact of the postures. That's pretty much it. Thank you, Debo. Thank you very much for your for your wrap up. And OK, Yahya, are you ready for your conclusion? Yeah. OK, your two yeah. minutes starts now. I would like to thank Bob and thank you as well, GC, and thank everyone who listened to us and hope uh, that we all have the benefit from this <laughs> conversation and discussion. And it's not a, an argument for the sake of the truth. I invite everyone uh, to submit as Jesus submit and obey one God, his father, and pray as, as I said, and show uh, from all the scripture, how all the prophet was confirmed by Prophet Muhammad, the way he prayed, like all the prophet and messengers who came before even Jesus and convey and confirm all the prophet how uh, they pray. And the Bible, uh, you can, when you read, uh, you will find that there is always confusion and contradiction, which which come with every new revised uh, uh, print of uh, of the Bible, while we have one Quran, and Quran tell the story of all the prophet, most of them actually, and teach us just we all command only to pray and worship one God. And this is the true religion, is submitting to one God. And... Uh, Everyone needs to be sincere with himself and with God uh, to uh, achieve uh, achieve salvation because salvation, it depends about faith and good deed and believing in the one God and do the will of God as Jesus peace upon his teach and all the prophets before, before them. While, while uh, uh, Bob, he mentioned Trinity, uh, uh, Trinity, it's a way to destruction and we will lose our salvation by not worshiping the creator, the father, as in John 17, 3. Okay. Uh, my you. advice, everyone, check, read, and read the Quran and ask and, uh, and find out. And thank you Excellent. very much. Peace be upon thank everyone. You. Thank you, Yahya. Thank you, Bobsila. Thank you, everybody, for staying up. Two hours, I think, two hours of this debate. I really like to thank both of you because you guys provided evidence to, to well, provided evidence to your to your arguments, and um, and the the whole purpose of this debate wasn't to uh, marginalize a group of individuals. This was meant to be a an academic debate where ideologies was going to be uh, dissected and critiqued. So that's all. So I hope you got um, you enjoyed the debate and, and found it edifying. One last thing, though, I just like to tell the Soko family that um, that YouTube has allowed the channel to um, get membership subscribers, 
which means that you guys will have customized um, emojis when all this type of debate. So you have like the um, Street Fighter Hadouken, Matly laughing, the mic drops as well, all of that. So I was hoping to get it ready for this stream, but the designer um, was taking a little longer than usual. So I will announce that when it's ready. So thank you everyone. Thank you admins for looking after the uh, after the chat. Uh, apologies if I, if I didn't manage to um, pick your questions. Um, but I do appreciate your all you guys tuning in. And God willing, see you see you in the next live stream. And please take care of yourself. And we'll see, I hope to see you soon. next time. Likewise, Yakia. Yeah. Good night. We love you, Yakia. Yeah. We love take you, Yakia. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. God bless. Take care. When are you going to become a Christian, bro? Christ is real. When are you going to become a Christian, Yakia? Yeah. <laughs> but Yakia, yeah, I love you.